Okay, so a wife must give her husband the benefit of the doubt when it comes to judging his motives. Yes, and for everybody else in the world. <laughs> I think it's so unloving when we judge people's motives. It is contrary to, in 1 Corinthians 13, love when it says, hopes all things. You want to hope all things. You want to hope for the best and believe the best. And until you're given hard evidence, you know, um, but hope for and believe the best, you know. Obviously, there's a time where you don't want to be a complete fool, obviously. Um, but I don't know. There has to be discernment in that, real discernment. I like that she says here that sometimes people pride themselves on their discernment they're actually being presumptuous and judging other people's motives and that is not pretty in fact one of the many generational sins that have been passed down to me is this and it is not something that i battle anymore by the grace of god when i first got married this is something that my husband would point out to me on a regular basis it wasn't me towards him it was with other people i would judge everybody's motives i would say watch they're gonna do this now oh i told you see but i was right but i was right and he would always just tell me like it's not loving and i said it's not not loving it's just reality i'm not being unloving i'm just being real and i would just argue it and i didn't see eye to eye with him and he was correcting me in it in love and i finally read this little book by John MacArthur called The Quest for Character and in the love section it spoke directly to this and the Lord used my husband his consistent loving correction in that little book to open my eyes to this disgusting sin in my life that I was unloving constantly to all the people around me judging their motives and he healed me of it and took it away and I only can give God the glory for that because I would have never been able to defeat this on my own and if my heart if he had not changed my heart I would still be believing that foolish lie of what it's not negative it's just reality what out of complete pride you know so I definitely battle other generational sins still but this one praise the Lord will not be passed down to my children <laughs> at least not from us you know so praise God for that. Then number six is a wife is more likely to sin if her words are rash. Of course, if we're being rash with our speech, we're probably going to fall into sin, stumble upon some sinful words and attitudes. Um, a wife is more likely to be heard if her speech is forbearing and sweet. We've talked about this. Um, my husband has told me so many times throughout our marriage. He loves it when my voice is sweet and tender and kind. And I just wanted to point out what she says here. This is not a fake sugar sweetness um being genuine but genuine forbearance is putting up with which is another part of the love in the love chapter putting up with its niceness um and a good test to see if you're just really genuinely being loving and sweet versus trying to be manipulative is when things don't go your way how do you respond <laughs> if you have a little fit about it you're being manipulative and your heart is not in the right place but if you're cool with it then you truly are just trying to honor the Lord with your speech and number eight an excellent wife is wise and kind when she talks to her husband um, and the last one a wife should purify her speech until it is more and more flawless keep